Welcome to Ladies Talk Show. This is your host, Leah Richheimer. We need to finish Chapter 7. Yay! But we have a bazillion questions coming in from Chapter 7, so we're going to go through them now. Where I'm going to do, not going to do any reading this class. We're just going to boom, boom, boom right into it. So, Gila, what you got for me? Okay, so um, Kayla says, my husband thinks I have a shopping problem already. I don't think he would respond very well to this method. I'm assuming she's talking about, you know, a gift, gift list. Or, right, yeah. Truthfully, I do really love shopping and might do it a little too much. Should I just avoid this method? That's interesting. Well, if you're already a big shopper and you've been shopping and shopping, chances are pretty high that that's not filling your appreciation bucket. Because if it was, you wouldn't keep shopping and shopping and shopping, uh, unless you're shopping because you need. If you're shopping, yeah, every, we all have to shop. <laughs> it's like, well, okay, we need food. Where's the bread? You know, so that's, I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about if you're doing a lot of gratuitous shopping, a lot of, you know, just window shopping and buying things that you don't really need, you know, which people do, um, you know, it's either a habit or, you know, maybe it's a psychological thing or I don't know, but it, I, I, I'm, this is not my area of expertise, but what I'm trying to say is that is likely not your uh, way, you, uh, your appreciation method. You should try some of the other ones. If it turns out that it is your appreciation me method and you're listening to this and you're like, you know, uh, Leia, no, that that is what I need to do. Then you're going to have to do a sales job on your husband and say, listen, you know, it is my appreciation bucket, you know, my hot button, the thing that makes me happy, the things that makes me feel is appreciated. Um, and, um, uh, and then just buy less expensive things. So, you can go shopping in, in a store that has very inexpensive stuff and, you know, and try and be happy. In other words, like if, if you have a, of a um, oven mitt, right? Everyone needs an oven mitt to be able to take stuff out of the oven, but yours has little holes in it and has, or whatever, and you're afraid to burn your finger if you put it over in that part of the oven mitt, buy yourself a new oven mitt, it's $6 or whatever you need to have it. And okay, you're upgrading. Maybe you would have waited another year and used it till it was falling apart. Those kinds of gifts that are don't cost a lot, that are things you really need, uh, that are it's a little luxury to replace it. You know, so you know a year earlier than you otherwise might have. Something like that. Find ways to do it. But I have a feeling if your husband's complaining about how much you already shop, um, there's a friction there. And I don't know if I would even go there at this point. It's a good question. Okay, Kayla, thank you. Okay, okay. What's so Chami asks, I made a gift list on Amazon and showed it to my husband. His response was, where's my gift list? I told him to feel free to make one, but he didn't and still hasn't used my list. How often can I bring it up without being annoying? Very good. I don't think it's a question of how often you should bring it up. I think it's how you bring it up in the first place well. <laughs> so it's not, you know, the quantity of communication that's called nagging, <laughs> just saying, okay, it's it's how you're going to say it. So what I would do is I would sit down and really think about maybe journal, maybe talk to a very close confidant or a rabbit in something and figure out how you're going to say it. And then uh, unless you have a really good track record of saying things well, but usually when it's our own stuff, we get you know, you'll bring in resentment. So, and you never bought me this and you missed my birthday and, you know, it gets all convoluted with a million different things. Whereas if you have a clear communication to your husband and say, listen, I hear that, you know, you want your gift list list also, that could be a separate thing. And if you still have that need, I'm happy to take care of that for you. Cause I love you and I want to take care of you. But right now I'm working on this whole project with myself of getting the appreciation I need because I learned that women has a, a, a appreciation bucket with a huge hole in the bottom and she just, it just constantly needs to be filled, constantly needs to be filled. And, you know, I looked at all the different um, things that make a, make me feel appreciated. One is if I cook dinner and you say, oh, that was delicious. That really makes me, you know, that, that fills my bucket. Another thing is I know every time, you know, I br bring the kids home from carpool, you're like, oh, thanks for doing carpool means a lot to me. You know, if I did it and you just took it for granted, I would feel, you know, see, again, see what I'm doing, ladies, I'm finding things to compliment, you know, I'm finding things that, that, uh, you know, uh, it, to make him feel good about what he's already doing, you know, so you look for those, so pour those on and then say, you know, I need, uh, I realize that gifts make me feel appreciated and so I need a list, you know, there's nothing horribly expensive on there, you know, trim it down a little bit, make it, make it easy and reasonable. You know, if it's your birthday, you can put expensive things on there. If it's your anniversary, 
uh, Hanukkah, something like that. But for now, just keep it with simple, a simple list and, and say, you know, you may need appreciation also, or you may need gifts also, or you may want gifts. It's very, very different for a man and for a woman. You're getting them because you like stuff and that you have every right to like stuff. And I'm trying to make you happy with that within our budget. I need it for not because I like stuff, which, which I happen to like, but it's more the, the, the icker, the main thing about these gifts is to fill my appreciation bucket. So even though I, I don't want to sit around here, I, I feel like we're going to end this conversation. And you're going to go and you're not going to do anything about my get list because you're mad about your own list. But can you keep them as a separate thing? Your list, if you want to do that, fine. It's very different from my list. Is that something that you're open to even, you know, acknowledging? And hopefully he'll say yes. And if not, you have to revamp how you're going to communicate it to him. So he does understand it. But I think with a a real lot of clarity and separating his needs from your needs, um, I think I think that will go a long way to have him sort of understand where you're coming from and not be like tit for tat. And again. You're using all of the other, you know, we, we, we finished seven chapters now, ladies, we've been together and we got, so go through chapters one through six and start working on your respecting your husband, on your communication with your husband, on your um, giving him control and letting go, work on all the other things. And this should go a lot easier. Excellent question. Okay, Gila, what else you got for me? Okay. Tamar asks, I feel that women in my community take this method a little too far. I often hear women bragging about all the gifts their husbands buy them, and then it almost becomes a competition. I'm worried if I try this method, I'll fall down the rabbit hole myself and will feel pressure to keep up with the materialistic standards of my community. Excellent question. And my recommendation is try the other five methods and do not try this method because I agree with you. It's very insightful of you. It's very smart of you. And you it's kind of like you saw a stumbling block before yourself. And you're walking around it. And I'm very proud of you. And don't use this method for now. Very good. Okay, what else, Gila? Okay, Razy asks, my husband is a spender. I'm afraid telling him this method will encourage him to overspend. Even if I tell him I'll buy the gifts, I know he'll still go ahead and buy me some too. What do you suggest? So we have a Masora that when a husband whatever, uh, you know, when a husband gives and the wife receives, even if it's above their budget, even if it's, you know, she, it's, you know, he, he overspent on something. He bought something at a store that she knows double prices, everything, and she could have gotten much cheaper, whatever. When the money comes in and when the gift comes in and when the, anything he's giving to her is received with a full heart and a full uh, physical thank you appreciation and I get it and, you know and, and it goes in to her um, uh, bucket so I the point is that if you just receive the breath I mean unless he's going crazy and he buys you a ten thousand dollar bracelet and you're twenty thousand dollars in debt in the credit card you know then you gotta you know you got a different problem and you need to you know fig- talk with him about it or talk with a close confidant that you can figure out how to solve that uh, you know uh, significant um, uh, issue um, but for the most part, even if your husband's a big spender, I would I would let him let him buy and just receive it with a lot of grace. If if it, that turns on really really making your finances worse and worse and worse, then you're going to have to sit down with a rub. But for you know if it happens you know two or three times a year, thank you, my dear sweet husband. Okay, what else you got for me, Gila? Okay, Lori asks, is it a problem to do these methods in front of our kids? I'm concerned my kids will pick up will pick up on it and try these methods themselves. I think that's a good thing. If a kid needs appreciation and says, you know, I doubt they'll do the ventriloquist. You know what I'm saying? They'll they'll feel too weird to do that. But they might say, didn't I do a good job on my homework, mom? And it's great. That's a great thing for them to learn. And you're like, yeah, you really did. It builds their own esteem and their own self, um, their own ability to get their own bucket filled. So it's I think it's uh, I think it's a great thing. Yeah, good. Okay. Yochavet asks, my husband loves buying me expensive expensive gifts. I know I'm very lucky, but I don't like wearing them in public because I feel like I'm showing off. My husband doesn't understand and wants me to wear what he buys me. Should I just wear his gifts anyways because it will make my husband happy and strengthen our shell bias or is showing off a real issue? 
Excellent question. Good for you. You're thinking the right thoughts and having the right questions. The problem is that uh, you have to wear them. No choice. So, um, you know, if he's buying you a big honking diamond, everyone probably thinks it's fake. <laughs> so what do you care? Um, I wouldn't worry about that so much. Now, it could be, um, you know, if you're in a community that's very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, everybody's just trying to get get by, basically, you know, it's financially, you know, mo most of the people are, you know, and you come up with, you know, you this you're dripping with gold and whatever, you know, that m might make them uh, feel badly. And then what I would do is I would switch your desires, say, you know, you gave me some beautiful, be beautiful pieces and I love them. You know what I really, if, 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 you know, instead of a big piece of jewelry, I'd love to go on a trip that you can hide from more people. <laughs> you know, you can like go with, oh yeah, we're going to, you know, we're going to visit friends or we're going to visit someone or whatever. And then you have to know that you took this fancy schmancy uh, uh, cruise up the, you know, the kosher cruise somewhere. Um, uh, so I would just maybe switch it a little bit to something that's not quite so ostentatious um, or showy and uh, like that. But if he buys you beautiful jewelry, I think, I think, um, you should wear it and, you know, it might be a safety issue. If you live in a dangerous neighborhood and, you know, you know, then you could say, say you only wear it when I'm going, when I'm going with you, I wear it when I'm by myself. I don't like to be wearing such expensive jewelry. Um, and, uh, but I think it would hurt his feelings to bought you these beautiful things. I think it's more important to take care of Shalom Bias than worry about what the community thinks. Um, although it'd be nice if you could do both. But if you had to choose one over the other, take care of your husband. Okay. Hey, we'll great. Be we'll be blessed. Okay, go ahead. Um, Chasya asks, we always have a lot of guests, not only on Shabbos, but also throughout the week. I would be embarrassed to try the prompt or ventriloquist method in front of others, but should I still try to do it? Definitely not in front of others. Um, definitely not in front of others. If you always have Shabbos guests, then after you clean the dishes, whatever, everyone goes home, bye, bye. And then you go, you know, you're sitting, you know, either with in front of your kids is OK. But more, I would do if you if you, uh, you know, maybe 50, 50, half the times privately and half the times in front of the kids or maybe 70 times privately and 30 in front of the kids, something like that. But they, and don't worry about it too much because um, it's it, it can be fine. I mean, in other words, if if you say in front of your husband, wasn't the food delicious in front of the kids or whatever, and, and your husband will say, oh, I love the brisket was amazing. It's good for your kids to hear that. Um, and uh, but then if it's something like, you know, someone at the table was like, you know, you know, uh, I don't think that you should have, you know, he's saying to you directly, you know, I don't think you should have said that to the principal because I think, you know, that wasn't, that was kind of a chutzpah thing to say. So they said something mean to you in front of everybody in front of the table. And your response was, um, I hear, you know, and, but what you really felt saying is like, who asked you? And what you're saying that in front of everybody, this is a private matter. And, you know, and you would have done the same thing, you know, you, you, whatever. Right. So then later when you're talking to your husband, you know, getting, getting ready for bed or whatever, brushing your hair, whatever you say, you know, I just want you to know at the, when, when the person said the, the unkind comment to me, I was so proud of myself that I just said, I hear rather than slamming back at her, you know, isn't that, aren't, aren't you proud of me? Or it wasn't that awesome. Wasn't that amazing that I had the self-control and he says, yeah, that was amazing. So you have to take into consideration how private the thing is, how, um, you know, if you said that in front of your children, it would be more lush and hara against this woman who said the wrong thing. And maybe, you know, for enough reasons for teaching your children, it's good for them to realize, don't do what this lady did. You know, that's part, part of halacha is to your, for enough reasons, you can, you can say something about, you know, but again, if it's somebody who, um, everything has to be carefully thought out because that would be lush and hara about her, um, unless you're teaching a lesson. Um, and you, you have to know the laws of gossip uh, very, very well to make sure you do it correctly. But it's fine to do it in front of your husband to get the appreciation you need for that particular issue, and also to bring closure to something that might have been painful. You know, to to when you're when you're vetching or, or venting or something like that, there is a place for that in Lush and Hara if you're careful. And 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 I think God Himself forgives us more if we're. We never say anything when we don't absolutely have to. And then when we have to, 
I think Hashem says, okay, you're very careful with this. I realize you need to vent this. And, you know, I feel like there's more Rachmanis available at that time. And there, there, I do have sources for that, so I can't remember them, but, but, um, uh, I hope uh, I, I'm not poskening for what you should do, but th- these are just uh, feelings on that area. Okay, go ahead. What's the next one? <laughs> Ricky asks, um, this method really doesn't sit well with me. I don't feel loved by asking for a gift. The love for me is my husband thinking about me on his own. What should I do? I hear that. Um, I think that's a, Look, there's some there's a rav who's teaching that a man should call his wife several times, once a day or several times. I I don't know. Somebody has told me and asked me a question about it, and that's only how I learned about it. So I don't really know what the story is, but of saying a husband should call a wife every day, you know, during work to show her that he's thinking about her, which you know could be a very lovely thing. Um, I think I know women who that would drive them crazy. Like what? Yeah, what? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm busy. What? <laughs> you know, I've got seven kids. I've got, I got I'm running a bank. I'm, you know, I'm a, in surgery, you know, like whatever. So some women that wouldn't totally not work for them. Um, but anyway, this Rav is saying it. So I would have to think that there is, he, you know, some Masura, some tradition of a woman needing to feel like her husband's thinking of her. So I, I can hear what you're saying. Um, and, and, and frankly, I wouldn't use the gift method if that, if that means nothing, you know, and especially if you're telling him what to give you, there's a lack of, uh, him, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's a lack of him thinking of you with you thought of him that he should think of you, you know, whatever. So, so that wouldn't do it for you. So I would skip that method, but the other methods, um, again, it has nothing to do with appreciation. You're talking about, you know, him thinking of you, which is, a, a, you know, is an attention thing. It's not necessarily an appreciation thing. So I would use those other five methods as a way to get the appreciation you need. And then to have him be thinking of you, which is a different thing, um, uh, you know, that would be a conversation with him and say, you know, sometimes I feel like you don't even need to, you don't even think about me. It's almost a lack of understanding of how a man's mind works, which is what he can see and feel and touch and whatever is in front of him and what he can't. It's like a woman can sit there and daydream about her, you know, what her husband said to her and how he whatever, you know, she can folding the laundry, whatever. And when a man is, you know, folding the laundry or whatever, he's thinking about the laundry. It's like this uh, this joke. And it, this uh, this guy goes, um, wait, wait a, a woman uh spends more time wondering what her husband is thinking than her husband actually is thinking (laughs) hello you know so a woman thinks that her husband should you know be daydreaming about her whatever man's mind mind works totally different so her desire to have her husband be thinking of her is is in my opinion so just a mistake from the get-go it's like that's you know rather than taking from him for who he is and accepting the love that he is able to give her in a myriad of ways. She's saying, no, only if he thinks of me in the middle of the day or, at, you know, or, or, or spontaneously by himself, then I'll feel truly loved. And it's, it's an unrealistic expectation. And if he did do it, I don't know, you know, if she's in the middle of doing, banging out a, a email to the principal to say what happened and when they're going to meet and blah, blah, blah. And her husband calls her and she's like, uh, 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 you know, I don't even know if she'd even like it that he was thinking of her in the middle of the day. And, and she had to connect when she wasn't in the connecting mode. So uh, these things have to be thought about very carefully, as you see. And once you think about them and have them down, then you can get your needs met. So start with uh, your appreciation, especially. Uh, start with those first five met- methods. Okay. okay that's amazing. Okay. 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 <laughs> Debbie asks, my husband says, thank you a lot, but he doesn't expound his appreciation much more than that. How do I get him to express his appreciation with more detail without sounding controlling? I already explained to him that I'll be trying to solicit more appreciation out of him. That's very good. Good. So, uh, you know, I think it's really, really important to understand the difference between control and getting your appreciation met, you know, and I think it has to do with communication. So if she's expressed to him that she, you know, that she's going to be starting to work on getting more appreciation from him, I think that should be enough 
for that to take it out of the realm of I'm trying to control you and what comes out of your mouth to I'm trying to get the appreciation I need without you having to do backflips to make me feel appreciated, <laughs> you know? So I think, um, I don't think she has to worry about that. If she's explained that to him, she might repeat it to him many times. It's fine to say, I'm not trying to control you. I just know I need the appreciation and I'm trying to take it off your to-do list, you know, and help you help me um, that both of us are, 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 are co colluding <laughs> to make me happy. And if just like we're both colluding to make you happy, but for to make me happy, get my appreciation bucket, it's, everybody's going to benefit. You're going to benefit because I'm going to be more satisfied in my life. The kids are going to benefit because I'm not going to be resentful and fetching around with everything I have to do. And I'm going to have a feeling of contentment that my appreciation bucket is filled. That was a beautiful question. And uh, it takes introspection for her to sort of look at what is driving her behind it in the first place. Very good. OK, what else? Hey, Toby asks, what if I really have expensive taste, but we can't afford my taste? I fakes, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, you, you can always, if you have expensive taste and you see this gorgeous dress that you have to have, and it's X amount of dollars, thousands of dollars, whatever, take a picture of it and go and have, have try, find someone to make it up for you for $400 or whatever. Eight, I don't know. You know, I don't know the, the price of these things, but I'm just saying, you know, um, that, that expensive taste, you have to look at where that came from. Is it just you have more elegant taste? Because you can do, you know, there, there are people that I'm sure you know some of them who, you know, don't have huge budgets, but they just, they just dress well. They, the things they have are fine. You know, there's some people who like a lot of inexpensive dresses. And there's some people who say, instead of getting five inexpensive dresses, I'm going to buy one gorgeous outfit, you know, everyone's different. You have to know yourself. And if you have expensive taste and you don't have the budget for it, you got to, you got to dance around. You got to get creative. That's, that's just it. And don't take it against your husband for not having enough money, because even if you had every beautiful piece of jewelry and every outfit and all those shoes and that handbag, that's ooh, beautiful. Oh, you just leave. And your friend has one, you know, and it was X amount of dollars or whatever, you know, it, even if you got all those things, it wouldn't make you feel nearly as satisfied as having your appreciation bucket filled. That that says it all. And if that isn't filled, then you start looking for material things to 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 make you happy. When just getting the appreciation you need by taking the responsibility for getting that need met, that is going to be a lot more satisfying than getting every expensive item. Okay, very good questions, ladies. Okay, Racheli asks, my husband hates tchotchkes and having extra stuff around. So I don't think he would like the gifts method very much, even though I love gifts. I'm worried this method might bring a new challenge to our Sean bias, him being upset by all the extra stuff around. Should I just avoid this method? Um, so here's the thing. There's tchotchkes, like a little glass thing that sits on a shelf. And every time you look at it, you see the caked on dust and then you clean it, whatever, and you put it back on the shelf and, and then it goes and it's it, two seconds later, it's dusty again. Okay. So there's those kind of tchotchkes that are sitting around that he can see and that like, you know, the house just doesn't feel neat and organized and whatever. Okay. And different people have different uh, styles. Some people like, you know, the country look with everything all hanging on the wall, you know, 27 pictures on one wall, you know, everybody has different. And some people like one lovely thing, you know, everyone's different. And you're saying he doesn't like the buttery tchotchke stuff. So here's what you do. Pick things that once he give them to you, disappear. So it's like, you know, spoons. You Every time you go to Shabbos, you're always hunting around, oh, I need something for the size of this salad and you whatever, and I need this spoon and you, you whatever. Go out and buy 10 spoons, different sizes, different handles, different whatever. Put them in his in his uh, closet or in a shoebox under the bed, wherever he keeps his step gifts for you. And then when he gives them to you, they go right in the drawer. They're not like sitting out and collecting dust. OK, and then you use them on Shabbos. And then when it comes out and you take that one that had the turquoise handle with little polka dots, whatever, I don't know, you know, and you're like, oh, you know, and some of this, oh, I love that spoon. And then again, if it's your parents, you say my husband got it for me. If it's somebody else, you say, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, just so that you don't make anyone feel badly that your husband is so wonderful to get you the spoons. Other things you can get that are hidden are, you know, um, 
let's say you like um, uh, certain makeup and you like different colors and different eye shades and different this and that and the other, they're expensive. There's, you know, some of you know, some of them can run into real dollars. Um, and, but you, would, it would make you happy to have, or you want a palette with different ones in it, whatever it is, those kinds of things, you buy them as gifts for yourself. He buys them for you and they go in a drawer and he doesn't see them. So go into think when you're thinking of gifts for yourself, think of things that are going to disappear, <laughs> you know, that, he, that he won't see that won't be part of your, his daily interrupt his life. Of, oh, I don't like Joshua's. Um, okay. So that is the, and you, you can tell I'm really expert <laughs> on these gifts. This gift thing. So, but try all of the methods. And again, you're trying all of the other the things in the book about, you know, um, being the navigator and not the controller, et cetera, et cetera. And as you go through those, he'll be a lot more receptive to this. Okay. This is, oh, I've got to get homework. Hold on, hold on. By the way, like and just thumbs up and do all of those good things. It really helps us a lot. A lot more people can hear of our show. Let me just think for a second. Um, the homework for today, I think, is to... Um, to to um, have a conversation with your husband, if you haven't already done so, about appreciation bucket. And you may not be making specific requests at him this at, at of him at this time. You might be thinking about which method is better, which one you'd like more, what means more to you. But have a simple conversation of saying that you know uh, oh, I'm learning this whole method about a woman has an appreciation bucket, and as a as a whole women around the world don't realize they have this bucket. It's like this thing. They, they, and, and they don't realize it's got a big hole in the bottom. And that once that is filled on an ongoing basis, a woman is more content in her life and not resentful and upset and moody. And so I'm going to be working on that, you know, and I'll keep you posted. You know, you can just, just, it can be as simple as that. Or you could say, you know, so I might be trying some of the methods you know, some different methods to get that appreciation bucket filled so that you, you know, I'm more content, which I think will make you happier. So like that. So the homework is to, to, to have one conversation with your husband about getting the appreciation you need and that women in general need that. So I think that will, instead of it just doing you being the bottomless bucket, knowing that women, that's how women are, I think will be very satisfying for him. Okay. It's Leia Richheimer for the Ladies Talk Show. We will see you next time. If you want more, we have so much more. If you want to learn our Masora and have an awesome marriage, the first thing we have is a foundations course. It's a 13-week course. You get all your questions answered. It's live with me and you can ask Q&A. It's awesome. Second thing we have is a coaching program. If you are awesome with people and you want to know the Masora better than 99% of the people on the planet Earth, like for reals, okay? It's a four-month program. It's very intense. We have major scholarships and we have somebody who's who's granted in a lot to pay for a big bulk of it. It's still a little expensive, but for what you get, and then you can char start charging money to know it. That's the coaching program. Don't miss it. Go to www ladiestalkshow.com look up the foundations course look up the coaching we do retreats we do all kinds of stuff you'll find it there www.ladiestalkshow.com thanks for being with us Leah Richheimer for the Ladies Talk Show <laughs>